welcome good people of the internet. I know, I know, third of the month, so there's something big going on in America. And I know it's a big deal, it's a huge deal, it's so big a deal that everyone lies about it. Because that's the way democracy works. Hmm. Then again, America isn't a democracy, so there is that. Um, yeah, sounds rambly, but I have something to say. You see, I was sitting nicely at a beach, and the tides rolling in, rolling out, you know how it goes, relaxing, and then I got a message on my uber-sensitive mobile device, and it was a video of the Young Turks. Now, I have to admit, I've not often made anything addressing the Young Turks. I may have once or twice, but not a lot, because pretty soon it was like, oh my god. I mean, to me it seems that these guys can't even breathe without lying. But since it's the third of this month, and in America there's an election going on, I really thought I needed to address this because, my God, this is what is media, or at least considered media, by certain people, at, at least the people who like the Young Turks. Now, what am I talking about? Let me share it with you. See what you think. As protesters across the country and people who just want to exercise their right to vote are dealing with intimidation tactics by Trump supporters. Now, everyone in America should have the right to protest. Mm -hmm, that's true. But there's a difference between protesters and rioters. But somehow she seems to be unable to recognize that. And um, I don't know how many non-Trump supporters have been killed for claiming to vote for Biden. Currently we do have people that have been murdered because they voted for Trump. And I'm pretty sure they didn't get murdered by Trump supporters. Just, just you know, to get things started. Trump himself is ensuring that the White House is boarded up and the bunker is ready to go for election day. Yeah, we can pretend that they're building a wall for no reason at all, but people seem to have forgotten what happened during the last election, or rather, the inauguration of Trump. And there has been a group calling out to siege the White House. Now, in the end, they didn't start when they claimed they started, but who is to say they're not starting today, tomorrow? What are they after? No, it would be better if you stopped trying to pretend that the people you talk about are innocent. Because it's kind of Trump that's the one that's under siege. Now, of course, uh, Trump is expecting some protests to take place. We're really uncertain um, whether there really will be any type of violence breaking out. But a lot of the fear regarding violence has to do with the possibility of Trump losing the election and his supporters losing their minds as a result. Yeah, I know it's, it's, it's all the rage to blame Trump in certain groups of society. But I've never heard Trump say, if you see these people anywhere, raise a crowd and tell them they're not welcome here or uh, no justice no sleep so go to their houses it's not trump funny enough i heard democrats do this i mean there are clips of this i'll, I'll show you one of maxine waters but that'll suffice for today seriously being truthful isn't something you do is it anna let's make sure we show up wherever we have to show up and if you see anybody from that cabinet in a restaurant, in a department store, at a gasoline station. You get out and you create a crowd. And you push back on them. And you tell them they're not welcome anymore, anywhere. But obviously, these are not the bad actors. People like Maxine Water calling out for violence on a duly elected president. No, no, they are not the bad actors. Trump is. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, he wants to give this aesthetic of 
Oh, we need to be worried about left wingers and Antifa attacking. So federal authorities are expected to put back into place a non scalable fence around the entire perimeter of the White House as law enforcement and other agencies prepare for possible protests surrounding the election. So basically you do understand that they're putting up a fence because there is an expectation of violence from the good people that don't really exist like Antifa or that aren't violent like Black Lives Matter. Baltimore seems to think things differently. Uh, Kenosha, Portland, Seattle, the, the list is pretty long. You want me to name all the cities where the peaceful protests of Antifa and BLM have turned into burning buildings? I doubt that this is what you want, but it would be really a shame, wouldn't it, if this were to happen to the White House? Then again, I mean, sure, why not? It's under Trump, so who cares? Try not to pretend that there is no left-wing violence, please. Because nearly all of the violence we have seen in America in the last year is left-wing. The fence is actually the exact same fence that was put up uh, during the protests that took place over the summer following uh, the murder of George Floyd. And if you guys can recall, uh, that was when Trump also decided to hide out in his bunker. And then when he emerged, he needed to hide behind uh, federal authorities and federal agents who reigned terror on protests and protesters uh, in Washington, DC. Again, there's a difference between protesters and rioters. And it's not that the president needs to hide behind the feds. The president and the feds are basically one. That's the whole idea with the federal government. And that, that's why, for example, in Portland, they went in to protect the courthouses. Not the rest of the city, because the governor didn't want him to. Didn't want Trump to clean up his mess. But, you know, the courthouses, well, that's federal. So the feds protect the courthouse because, well, it is their jurisdiction. So the extra layer of security marks the most high profile example to date of authorities preparing for unrest following this year's election, particularly if there's no clear winner come November 4th. And to be sure, Trump has demanded that the winner of the election be declared on the night of the election, which is unlikely to happen because of the influx of mail-in ballots. Yeah, Anna, once again, you're lying. He didn't say the result has to be there on the 4th of November. He said it should be there in due time. And in due time could mean a week or two weeks, but not a month or two months. The thing is, there is this electoral college thing. I mean, yeah, these people need to vote too. And they need to vote based on the results. So the results have to be there before it is their time to vote. It's, it's not really complicated, Anna. Why do you lie? Also last week, Immigration and Customs Enforcement was also putting its agents on standby while Customs and Border Protection was training its personnel in the lead up to Election Day. Additionally, 250 National Guardsmen have been put on standby reporting to Metro Police officials. So there are more details, Jenk, but I really think that this is an attempt to I think scare people uh, to, to put out this message of, ooh, it's gonna be dangerous on election day, so don't get out the vote. Well, considering the riots, is it really that unreasonable to consider that there might be um, some hubbub during the election? Is it really that unreasonable for the government to make sure that there is uh, extra safety protocols to make sure that everyone can vote? You, you make it sound like it's a bad thing that the police wants people to be safe. It's, it's not so much that people shouldn't go out to vote. Hell, Trump told people to go out to vote, so he's not trying to fear people into not voting. But he wants society to vote. You're the ones telling them that the police are being made ready to fight any insurrection. I mean, are, are you trying to tell people to be afraid and not vote. But fortunately, about 70% of likely voters have already cast their ballots, which is pretty incredible. Oh No, yeah, no, I agree. 70% already voted, which is a great thing. And, and, and funny enough, I heard most of these voters voted for Trump. So yeah, there is that. 
though, yeah, there's still a lot of questions about fraud, but um, yeah, we'll probably know the truth in a year or 10. Well, you gotta give Trump credit. He said he was gonna build a wall, and he finally built a wall. Yeah, well, you know, Trump did build his wall. About 300 miles of the wall has been finished. This is not enough, obviously, because it's not 2,000 miles yet. Oh, wait, you mean the fence around the White House? Oh, ha, ha, you're so, you're so droll. <sighs> um, around himself. Um, <laughs> it's a big, beautiful wall. Yeah, well, and now America has devolved so much underneath Donald Trump that the president of the United States has to build a giant fence around the White House so that the people don't come in when he tries to steal an election. Steal an election? Schenk, are you, are you sure? Have you seen how many people come to the rallies? And okay, uh, polls prove that Biden is winning, but I've also seen how many people come to his rallies. I press X to doubt whenever I see a poll blaming Biden is sure to win. And um, Trump doesn't need to protect himself. He's protecting the White House. I mean, he can go wherever he wants. If he really wants to go into a bunker, he can do what Joe Hiding is doing. Uh, sorry, Joe Biden is doing. He can just go to a house somewhere in the middle of nowhere and stay inside. He's not doing that. So I don't think Trump is hiding or fencing himself off of the rest of the United States. And in all fairness, I mean, roughly half of the United States are completely in favor of him, and roughly half of the United States are not completely in favor of him, but less than 10% wants to see the country burn. And um, it, it's that 10% that is the issue. Now, those 10% started rumbling under Obama, and uh, the Democrats made sure they kept doing so under Trump. Because let's be honest, if we look at what happened to, once again, Seattle, Portland, I mean, the governors there didn't want Trump to come in and help. No, no, let's blame Trump for all the things that go wrong. Anyway, I, I think this is where I'm going to stop uh, responding uh, to the video, because I've only done about, what, one minute, two minutes? And I've had a lot of talking myself because they're lying. And I, I really wanted to add a little piece. You know what? I am going to add a little piece from the whole talk and then I'll finish. Look, people power, we really need to rely on people power. Sitting back and waiting for the Secret Service or, or any government agency to do the right thing. I think that is incredibly naive and short-sighted. I have no faith in them whatsoever. They have allowed Donald Trump to get away with murder, literally in some cases. So basically what we're seeing here is Anna calling for violence, people power, because we can't trust the government to do it. And she is, um, how do you call that, slandering? She's claiming that President Trump killed someone. Literally. Now, probably she doesn't know what the word literally means. That is obviously still a possibility. And we are talking about ideologically inclined idiots. I'm sorry, Anna, you are. Um, but I don't think Trump literally killed anyone. Could people have died because of his policies? It's possible. I don't know. There's not a lot of federal policies being enacted in any of the United States. I mean, yes, COVID is a huge issue because lots of people died because of COVID, but they didn't die because of Trump. After all, he's not the one telling the states how to handle the states. Every state have its, has its own governor and those governors need to take care of business. So that's not really Trump's fault. So I'm and, and even if it were his fault, then it would still not be literally, because it's not as if Trump is pulling the trigger on anyone. Anna, you need to be careful, because I think you might be crossing the line of what a journalist is allowed to do. I think you're getting really, really, really too far into slander.
Now, I personally wouldn't mind if the Young Turks was destroyed and taken off YouTube, um, but I don't really want that to happen either. I do, however, think that we really need to be more careful because slander is still illegal. And um, I'm curious if anyone will pick up on that slander and, and, and sue her. I'm not going to, I'm not in America. But I would find it so funny to hear if someone did. But maybe no one will. Anyway, I've been rambling around uh, for a while now. And, and I'm sorry, but when I, when I first met the Young Turks online, I didn't meet them in person, obviously, I enjoyed their work. I didn't truly believe them because some of the stuff they said was... Uh, very clearly not 100% correct back in the day but they've gone away from not being 100% correct to not being correct at all and this somehow is something we see in a lot of media especially when they're against Trump you can say anything you want as long as you're against Trump because no one will call out your bullshit but then again, I think that's one of the reasons why they call Schenk the Buffalo. Because he's spreading so much of it. Anyway, it's not Schenk this video was aimed at. It was Anna. But it's still the Young Turks, so... <laughs> like, share and subscribe if you feel so inclined. Criticism, as always, is more than welcome. If I said something that you disagree with, okay, bring your argument. But if I said something that is not factually true... I'm truly interested to hear about that, because I kind of like to be factually correct. So if I'm wrong, point it out, please. Like, share and subscribe if you feel so inclined, and I hope to see you all next time.